Hello and welcome to Indian Standard Time. I'm Siddharth Vardarajan and my guest today is the Deputy Foreign Minister of Argentina, Senor Eduardo Zwain. Welcome to Rajya Sabha TV and to this program. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very happy to be in India. It's my first time, but I'm very happy. Very happy. Now, uh, obviously, you've had meetings with uh, Indian officials, Indian leaders during your visit here. Tell us something about uh, the push that you are making or that Argentina is making for uh, the bilateral relationship with India right now. Okay, my first aim and principal aim to visit India is to strengthen the relation with this important country. Uh, Argentina uh, has the political will to arrive at a strategic relation with India. India is a key country, in the, not only in this region, it's a key country in the world. We have many common things, uh, we have uh, many possibilities to, to expand our, our bilateral um, relation, especially in political fields, but also in commercial fields. So uh, this is my, my aim, to visit him and to explore any possibility to strengthen this relation. Right. Uh, one of the uh, issues that's very important for the Argentine government right now, uh, recently President Kirchner has commemorated the days of sovereignty of Argentina over the Malvinas Islands. Uh, these are islands uh, which Argentina says it belongs to itself. The British contest this. They call them the Falklands Islands. Uh, tell us, for the benefit of our viewers, a little bit of the background of this dispute and why Argentina believes that the Malvinas belong to it. Okay, it's very important to make a, a, a short explanation about the, the problem. Uh, during 19, 1933, a British army took this island uh, this island uh, was in the near the, the continent, South American continent. In this island, there were closest to Argentina, very yes. close to Argentina. Um, this island um, were uh, Argentinian authority and Argentinian population. The British army arrived and expulsed the the population, Argentinian population, and the authority, Argentinian authority, and implanted British population. It's a typical case of colonialism, a typical case of imperialism. So since at this moment, Argentina began to claim to come back the island to our sovereignty. Now we have more than 42 United Nations resolutions, 42 United Nations resolutions to establish that United Kingdom and Argentina must negotiate, sit and negotiate about the future of the island, about the sovereignty of the island. But United Kingdom, this founder of United Nations, refused. But it, at, uh, up to now, it's not only a national uh, aim in Argentina. It's not only a national um, see, aim of Argentina. It's Latin American aim. Uh, all Latin American countries support Argentina. But not only Latin American, African countries, Asian countries. Uh, that uh, supporting Argentina in the uh, effort to negotiate to, with the United Kingdom about the sovereignty of the island. Um, as you know, in the United Nations, the, the, um, there are 17 cases of colonies, uh, territories, 70, 17 territories of colonization, to be descolonized. Descolonize, yes. Right, yeah. Ten of these, ten of them uh, belong to the United Kingdom. And we are open to negotiate with the United Kingdom, but the United Kingdom re refused to negotiate. But it's not only the problem of sovereign dispute, territorial dispute, it's also a problem of natural resources. Uh, before I come to that, now, uh, the, it is a fact that the British, during the 60s, perhaps in the 70s to in early 70s, had engaged in dialogue with uh, yes. Argentina about how these islands could be returned. Uh, that process has the British say cannot be revived because of the invasion or the armed effort by General Galtieri in mm -hmm. the 80s to, mm -hmm. to recover the Malvinas Islands. Uh, uh, to what extent is that act of war by Argentina at the time in the 80s uh, an obstacle today uh, when the British say that, look, we can't talk because uh, we, we fought a, w a war over this, British soldiers died. Uh, to what extent is that a legitimate argument that the British make? Uh, it's, it's very important to establish that uh, this war was a uh, case but a military, a military dictatorship in Argentina. It's not the decision of the Argentinian people. That's right. But the, the very important fact is that uh, since that the, the end of the war, Argentinian diplomacy managed to 
uh, establish, re-establish the question in United Nations, re-establish the question in diplomatic uh, fields. Okay. So, so the war did not affect the status of the Malvinas no. Islands as a territory to be decolonized no, no, in, no. The, in the UN system? No, because uh, 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 the uh, great majority of the country of the world understood in this moment that the war was caused by the military dictatorship. Right. That, that, uh, uh, profit. A dictatorship that the Argentine people themselves opposed. Yes, yes, yes. yes. But uh, it's very important also to, to say to you that in our constitution, in our national constitution in Argentina established that the island will be come back to the territory, the integrity territory of Argentina by diplomacy, uh, diplomatic channels, by negotiation for, for peace. So the dispute is not territorial dispute, it's also a terri a natural resources. Okay. The British government uh, led uh, a few companies to explore oil and gas in the, in the sea surrounding the islands. And this is uh, an, an illegal, an illegal measures. So we are protesting and we are in a criminal, using a criminal code to uh, be, um, put before the trials at the executive of this company that they are exploring oil and gas in so, RC. So these are multinational executives who have acted on a British invitation yes. to explore oil and gas yes. in the, in the yes. Uh, yes. waters off the Malvinas Islands. Yes, Island. this is an illegal, uh, because the natural resources belong to the Argentinian people, okay. not to the British people. Another, uh, another aspect of this question is the militarization of the island. Uh, Argentina is a country, is a peaceful country, we want to, rec uh, to come back the island by diplomatic channel, but the United Kingdom, they are military sites, the, the, the island. Do you know the, the Islander, they, they are only 1,200, and there are 1,000 soldiers. Right. So it's the territory, military ter territory in the world. It's a, it's a threat to South America, this important military base. And we connect this situation with the, the military and industrial military complex in in United Kingdom, because there are many money. There are the British government uh, spend many money to maintain this military base. How do you respond to the British argument that the future of the islands um, must be settled by the wishes of the islanders themselves? Okay, is, uh, I want to explain you uh, uh, um, an example. I, I took your house and expulsed you and put my family. And after this, I, I asked my family if they, are, uh, they want to remain in this house or not. This is the same situation. The, the, the population in the island is a British population implanted by British After Army. 1933. Anti uh, yes. Uh, 80, yes, 1833. So, the, uh, so 1833. 18, yeah. They are the descendants, yes. but not, not the majority of the islanders descendant of the implanted population, the British uh, population. They are British population, the, the other colonies of British Empire. So the problem is not with the islanders. We respect the way of life of the islanders, the language, the institution, all. The problem is between United Kingdom and Argentina. It's a sovereignty dispute. It's not about the population of the island. Right. It's not the case of self-determination because the islander is not the original population. There's a population implanted. So then again, I took your house, put my family, and after this, ask my family is they are very happy in, the, in, in your house, it decided to remain in your house. It's very ridiculous the position of United Kingdom. And, and tell us the status of, of your efforts to engage in a diplomatic dialogue with the British on the future of the Malvinas Islands. What's the British response been? Yes, but the United Kingdom refused to, to dialogue with Argentina. So they simply will not talk yes. about this? Yes. It's a very curious case also, very curious position, because if you analyze the position of the Foreign Office about the many conflicts in all over the world, yes. they establish that the dialogue is necessary, but except in Malvinas Island. Right. right. And, and the rights of the islanders... They don't apply that argument uh, for uh, Diego Garcia or the Chagos Islanders. Yes, uh, it's a very, very, very um, important example of so the Chagos Island and the, the Diego Garcia Island, this, the same name. Very close, I mean, in very, the, in the yes, Indian Yes, very close right, in India. Right. Uh, uh, this uh, British colony 
and uh, the British Empire expelled this population without asking nothing, expelled this population to establish a military base there. And the other example is Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, the United Kingdom is a, a former British colony, but the United Kingdom didn't ask the, 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 the population if they want to uh, come back to China or not. Right. They decided without asking nothing. Right. So it's not a, 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 a compress, a, 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 we don't understand. Right. Uh, moving away from the Malvinas issue, there's been a considerable progress in the last decade or so in the field of uh, Latin American integration. Yes. We've seen, uh, apart, well, the OAS always existed for yes. North and South America, but you have the UNASUR, you have ALBA, you have SILAC. Yes. Are these formations largely of a political character or has there been any success in integrating the economies of uh, the Latin American and the Caribbean region. Okay. It's very important to, to say to you that uh, Latin America now, we are living a very interesting moment because from since uh, 10 years ago, we are enjoy a political integration in many mechanisms. The more important is UNASUR, is a meeting of all South American country. CELAC is a meeting of all Latin American country. And Mercosur is a meeting between Argentina, Brazil, Venezuela, Uruguay, Paraguay. Uh, this mechanism is a political integration, but also we have the, the, the other aim is to integrate in the future in economic integration. For instance, Mercosur. Mercosur is not only political integration, it's also commercial and economic integration. It's true that the political integra integration is more easy to do. Right. No? And the political integration help to our countries to consolidate our democracy. Right. Now, um, Latin America is a, a continent that all countries will have democracies. But uh, uh, economic integration, in the case of Mercosur, commercial and economic integration, is more difficult. And we, uh, we make advance, but it's not so fast as uh, political integration, right. because we have to integrate our economy. And we want to integrate our economies without, without producing uh, unemployment, for instance. So it's a, we have to analyze any step that we decided, that we decided to do. But we are looking for, we are in the path to, to arrive to economic and commercial integration in Mercosur. And UNASUR, the meeting of South American country, and CELAC, the meeting of Latin American country, we have the far aim to arrive in the future also a political, economic and commercial integration. Right. But not only, as other acts of the foreign affairs, uh, foreign policy in, in Argentina, is to integrate with other key countries all over the world. We have a strategic relation with China, a strategic relation with Russia, and we have the will to arrive to a strategic relation with India also. Right. Mm? We, we think that it's very important, the South-South dialogue, has, have these efforts led to some rebalancing uh, of Latin America's relationship with the United States as a result? Is, uh, is the American ability to treat uh, Latin America as a backyard, yes. has, that, has that come down as a result of uh, all of these uh, growing um, integration plans? Yes, but we have a very important dialogue with the United States. But uh, the, the, change, the, the things are changed because we, uh, now we feel that we are an independent country. And we have mature dialogue with the United States. We have uh, um, uh, things in common, as the democracy, the fight against terrorism, uh, 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 the no nuclear no proliferation aspect. We have very important dialogue with the United States. And we have the, the feel that we are not agree. So, but we have a mature dialogue. We feel in Latin America that we, we are independent country. Right. I, I, I want to assimilate the dialogue between India and the United States. Right. Right. Uh, you know, we are having our conversation today in the midst of the Greek financial crisis, yes. the whole issue of uh, Greece defaulting, yes. uh, the Greek creditors making all kinds of demands on the Greek government and the Greek people. Argentina has some experience in this regard. Yes. Uh, you defaulted in 2001. Yes. That led to severe deflation or crisis within the Argentine economy. And of course, last year and this year, you've had problems with creditors largely stemming from 
uh, the demands of vulture capital yes. funds. Tell us something about the current status of your talks uh, with your creditors. Okay. Um, the principal, the title of this question is that the world needs a new archi financial architecture. Not look forward to the speculation, but look for the production. The financial uh, fields must help the country to produce and to develop country, not to financial speculation. Right. No? This is the title of the question. The, uh, I want to express our so solidarity with the Greek people and the Greek government because they are suffering the same thing that Argentina suffered in the past. Uh, the, the external debt must be traded in order to help the country to develop because if the country develop, de become a developed country, can pay the, the debt. If the country go down, in the economy of the country go, uh, goes down, it's not possible to pay the, the debt. Uh, Nestor Kirchner, former president in Argentina, used to, to say that the dead people cannot pay the debt. The dead people cannot pay the debt, the external debt. So the, the system must help the country to pay the debt, not to force the country to, that the economy goes down right. and, and put the, 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 Greece, the, the, Greece, uh, the Greek people at the doors of the misery. It's not the solution of the question, but there are many important interests. Right. The International Monetary Fund, the, the, um, the World Bank, is the, the solution that they are giving our countries is not the right solutions. But not only in the theory, it's not a solution in the facts. We, Argentina is a very uh, important example that is this solution that... Um, of austerity. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes, austerity. Yeah. It's not, the, the, it's not the, the right path. Argentina also, is, uh, we have a very important uh, fight against future funds. Because Argentina, after the very, very deep crisis in uh, 2001, as you said, arrived an very important agreement to, with the 94% of the creditors. A very important agreement. And Argentina, we are paying the debt we, um, to this 94% of, of the, the creditors. 1% of the other creditors that they didn't accept this agreement, they, go, they, they went to the American justice to claim the other type of agreement. And we are fighting against this decision. Because so what's the current status of, of the this? The current state that Argentina, we are paying our debt. We are paying our debt. We are, uh, pay, uh, we are respect our, the agreement. We are paying our debt. And we are fighting not to pay the, the total debt because if we want to make um, the accountability, I, I, want, uh, I will demonstrate to you that Argentina paid the external debt many times, not one time, many right. times. Right. Because the system, the system is, a is a look for the speculation. So interest to interest to interest to interest to interest. Right. And we arrived at the point as in this in this time, Greek people, Greek government, they write this point that it's impossible to pay. Yeah, I mean, people are describing in Greece the, the choice in the, in the forthcoming referendum as a uh, choice between whether the Greek people themselves will decide their political future yes. or, or a set of bankers and yes. creditors. Yes, and now we are mm, discovering the advantage of the global system, of the globalization, because Greek people uh, know very well know very well now the Argentine experience. Right. So they imagine the, the, uh, the, the end of this crisis. Right. Uh, one of the predictions being made is that if, if the crisis carries on in Greece and Greece is forced to leave the Eurozone, this would lead to tremendous dislocation of the Greek economy. Now, Argentina has some experience. I mean, mm. it, it wouldn't be fair to compare the euro with the currency board that you had with the US, but uh, Argentina did not suffer from uh, the readjustment when you, when you abandoned the currency board with the dollar, did, you, did it? No, no, because we are the rich country, yeah. and um, after the, this big crisis when Nestor Kirchner arrived to the president of my country, we decided to develop our country, to decide to promote 
economic growth right. after the default. And we, uh, my government shown all, before all over the world, that when uh, the, the, um, you let the country grow, economic growth, the country must, can pay the, the debt. So Argentina is a, is a very important example that what we have not to do in about the solution yes. to pay the debt, and it's a very uh, important example what we have to do right. to, to not to suffer and to, to, um, to resolve the crisis. Right. How important is... Uh, energy and shale gas for the future direction of the Argentine economy? I know that you're not the finance minister or the energy yes. minister, but uh, shale is important, increasingly yes. important for you. Yes. Uh, Argentina will have the second reserve of the shale and oil gas in the Patagonia, in the south-south of the country. It's a very important... So this is the second largest reserve in the Second world. largest reserve. In second largest re reserve. So it's very important for our development. We, we want to become an industrial country to develop. Uh, we, we know as India, uh, it's a, India is a, it's a good example for us, that if you, will, if you want to develop your country, if you want uh, the welfare to your people, it's very important the industrial de development. We, we want to deep our industrialization. For this industrialization, it's very important oil and gas right. also. And, and you have access to all the fracking technologies and so on? Yes, yes. yes. We, begin the pro we are beginning the process because it's a, it's a large reserve. It's a large, very large. So, so we are beginning the process. There are many investors that um, decided to, to, to go to... to they are a, a very important prospect. Very important prospect. Many, for instance, coming back to Malvinas, Many very important companies all over the world decided not to invest in Malvinas okay. to, uh, to preserve the possibility right. to invest in the continent. Right. In fact, the Indian oil company, OVL, also was invited to uh, explore oil and gas off yes. the Malvinas and they refused to go. Yes, because the, the great opportunity is not in Malvinas Island, but it's in the continent. In other parts of Argentina, they say the continent. Right. Uh, th there is one issue that uh, we're running out of time and last couple of minutes I want to put to you, which has to do with uh, India and Argentina. Yes. Uh, we agree on perhaps a large number of issues internationally. Yes. One, one area where we don't agree <laughs> is on the question of United Nations Security Council reform. Mm -hmm. uh, India wants uh, the number of permanent seats to be expanded and for India to be part of that. We have uh, worked together with Brazil Japan and Germany in the so-called G4. Uh, now, Argentina doesn't share that view. You have a different view. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to put you other title of the question. Okay. Yes. <laughs> in this, You're the diplomat, I'm the journalist. <laughs> yes. in, this, in this situation, in this structure of the United Nations, is serve to resolve the international crisis or not? This is the question. Okay. In, this, in this structure of the United Nations, in, in the point of view from Argentina, we think that it's not useful to resolve the crisis. Look the crisis in Syria, look at the crisis in Iraq, look at the crisis of the immigrants that they want to arrive to, from Africa to Europe. Look the question of Malvinas. The United Nations structure now is not useful to resolve fast and efficiently the, okay. the international crisis. So we, we, um, we have to think in another structure. structure. The, right, the right of veto in the, in the Security Council is not useful. It's not useful to resolve any, any questions. Because if you um, try, uh, propose something that the other country to write the veto don't want, it's put the veto. Right. So, and now there are other questions. The many countries is thinking about the future bet of one of the country, yes, they are stem to propose nothing. Because, oh, no, uh, we think that this country will put the veto, the, the, will use the right of the veto. So uh, the, the question is, United Nations used, uh, managed to resolve the crisis or not? We think that uh, we have many problems. Argentina, we have a very important commitment with the United Nations. We are participating in 
all mechanisms in the United Nations. If you want to, uh, when, uh, if you go to the United Nations and explore any mechanism, you will discover an Argentine people there, right. because we are a very important commitment. We love the United Nations. We want the United Nations. So we want to become better United right. Nations. And we think that the right of veto is not a, a sufficiently instrument to resolve the crisis. So even if India and Argentina don't agree on specific proposals for reform, at least you share the perception that the structure of the UN, the way it is today, perhaps does not accurately reflect the uh, democratic distribution of power in the world. Yes. We think that it's not democratic structure. Right. But this is the, 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 the principal problem right. for us. It's not a democratic... Uh, uh, again, Malvinas, United Kingdom, if Argentina wants to resolve the crisis through United Nations, yes. it's not possible. Well, on that note, uh, Eduardo Zwein, thank you very much for joining us yes. on Rajasabha TV.